Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. <laughs> our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes, autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. And we are so thrilled to be offering one of the first of its kind digital, virtual, and continuous learning environments, enabling parents and children to connect from all around the world. At Project Purpose, our overarching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions on all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others, with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education play a role and have played a role in our societies at large. These discussions and debates provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development, better known as leadership in juvenescence. We recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments, both socially and politically, that will enable our children to thrive. For those of you who are particularly particularly keen on the topic. We also write thought pieces every other Sunday and we actually just dropped a thought piece this past Sunday. So definitely be sure to meander over to the website and check out our online content. Now, if it is the case that you are looking for a listening alternative, well, we're now available on 12 different podcast platforms. We are very excited to announce that we have been made available on Amazon Music and Audible, as well as the Stitcher platform. And we are so excited that we are expanding and growing our podcast community as well as our YouTube community. Now, as is the convention, be sure to subscribe, hit that post notification bell so that you are aware of every time we post. And of course, if you like this conversation and you want to keep it going, like, comment, and share this segment. Let's get into it. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another segment here on Project Purpose. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week-by-week -week basis. And today, our topic of discussion is mental wellness. And on the topic of mental wellness this week, we're going to be talking about core lessons in self-forgiveness. Yes, core lessons in forgiving oneself, because I, I've realized as I've been on this platform for just over a year and a bit, that there are a lot of different reasons why we show up the way we show up and why we struggle in the areas that we struggle in. And some of it is based in an inability to forgive ourselves after we've held ourselves accountable to the situation and the circumstance. I don't think that I realized or could have known to what extent that self-forgiveness just isn't the norm. I did not realize like, how many people struggle, but I've realized since making myself sort of open and available to having conversations that self-forgiveness isn't something that all of us are really very good at doing. A lot of us really can hold ourselves in contempt and for extended periods of time for simply being human. And I have to say that the one thing that I do fairly well is I do forgive myself. I'm very forgiving and very compassionate to myself because I was in such an intense and highly competitive sort of environment and because I love learning and part of learning is failing, right? Part of learning I've internalized is getting things wrong. I'm very kind to myself when it happens because sometimes getting things wrong is already a really horrible experience, right? It can be very debilitating. It can be very embarrassing. It can be humiliating. It can be a life altering experience, right? Like when we fail to show up the way that we wanted to, or when we don't perform the way that we were expected to, I mean, there's really dire consequences that can come from that. And I think that it's only right that I carry myself through those experiences because those experiences are debilitating enough 
enough. I don't also want to, you know, keep colds in my head by also criticizing myself for the things that I did wrong. I think that I hold myself accountable for the things that I do wrong, but because I already know that I'm dealing with the consequences of those poor choices or those actions or that ignorance or that misstep, that is such a heavy weight in and of itself that I'm helping supporting myself through that I don't feel it necessary to heap on criticism, disappointment and contempt on myself over top of that. I think that that is a stretch and I think that it's what a lot of us do. And I didn't realize that a lot of us did that until I came online, but I'm realizing that, you know, it is prevalent. And I just want to come on here and say that life is going to hand us consequences, whether we take accountability or we don't, whether we're focused on learning and growth or we're not our actions come with reactions at all times and in all cases. And I think that <laughs> when you know, when you know that you're putting your best foot forward, when you know that you're trying your hardest, when you know that you had good intentions, when you're showing up, not expecting things to turn the way that they did, when you're showing up and you know you didn't have ill intent, you, you know that you really just wanted things to function and, you know, and to work in a specific way and they don't, that sucks, but I don't think that it it means that we beat up on ourselves. I think that we're all a work in progress and to truly internalize the message that we're a work in progress, it also means that there are going to be situations where we don't manage that situation properly, right? Or where we mismanage that situation, we mismanage that relationship, we mismanage those conversations and we deal with the consequences of that. And I don't think that consequences are things we can easily sidestep. I think even if it is the case that someone's letting us off, there is always a hidden or an unspoken consequence to everything. Like I'm a huge believer in cause and effect and action and reaction. And I think because I'm very involved in that process, I'm very aware of how my actions help me and hurt me. I want to be my friend through that. And I think that that is the core aspect of self-forgiveness and why some people can forgive themselves and some people can't. If you are like the drill sergeant and you're very mean to yourself and you're like, you know, bashing yourself even through your successes. So re regardless of whether you're failing or succeeded, like the way you talk to yourself isn't kind, it's not friendly, then it makes sense that you struggle with self-forgiveness because you already hold yourself in contempt, right? And I think that the one relationship that we often overlook is the one we have with our inner being, the one that we have with ourself. And I have spent a lot of time nurturing that relationship. I. I have to I have to say that it's like the foundation that I had maybe growing up that made me aware that that was a relationship I needed to work on, like focusing on my Delta, even before it was called a Delta. It was just sort of mind, body, spiritual alignment, making sure that you're physically fit, making sure you're taking care of your emotional well-being, making sure that you're being mindful of the thoughts that you're engaging in. And I think all of that together comes with developing a respect and a regard for your inner being and how that inner being is impacted by the way that you navigate in the world around you and that compassion it leads to friendship, right? A friendship with yourself. And I think that if it is the case that you're struggling with self-forgiveness, it might mean that you need to start working on the relationship that you have with yourself so that you can let yourself off the hook. Because again, we're all works in progress. We're all learning and growing and learning involves failing. It involves those missteps. It involves dealing with the consequences of our actions and dealing with the consequences of our ignorance, but learning from it and then rising above it. So I wanted to jump on here and have that conversation because I, I think that going our whole lives continuously holding ourselves in contempt and never being kind to ourselves, never being friendly to ourselves, yet feeling inclined to show kindness and to show goodwill to other people, I mean, that needs to be reflected inwards too, right? I think it would be very hard for me to try to step into a reality where I can extend kindness to others, but don't feel that I'm deserving of it. I think that kind of inner contempt would just be so painful and I would hate to have have anyone normalize that kind of inner contempt. I would want to put it out there in the ether that if it is the case that that's your dynamic with yourself, then maybe it's subject to review, right? You think about what has taken place in your life that has created that rift, that inner rift where you can't have that alignment because you hold yourself in contempt because you can't forgive yourself for certain things and what you can do to resolve that so that you can have that inner sense of wholeness, right? Because I think when you're very harsh, when you're very mean to yourself, when you don't let yourself off the hook, it's breaking you apart inside, essentially. So 
I mean, I think that that's a bit of a sentimental point, but I do think that the way that we treat ourselves through our failures and through our missteps and through the consequences that life will inevitably dole out, it really helps to ensure that we're supporting our mental wellness or that we're hindering it, right? And every little thing that we do will have a positive or negative effect on our mental wellness. Every habit, every conversation we have with ourselves and with others has an impact on our mental wellness. Like every little detail bears weight and I and I want everyone to kind of just be cognizant of that I want you to be cognizant of the things that have really hurt your capacity to maintain a high level of mental wellness and what things are helping you or what things could help you moving forward. So this was a quick little conversation, just kind of putting it on your radar that self-forgiveness is important. I think all of us deserve forgiveness for everything that we've done in our lives. I think that that doesn't mean that we don't deal with the consequences. That doesn't mean that we're not dealing with the effects, the consequences, the impacts of the decisions that we make. We have to deal with those. It's going to hopefully contribute to our growth and evolution and our maturity and our ability to recognize that our learning through life we want to mitigate the trauma that other people experience as, as a result of our learning. But all of us have been the villain in someone's story and we don't need to be proud about it, but we can be kind to ourselves for the role that we have played in the past and the role that we're hoping that we don't play in the future. But don't hold yourself in contempt for not knowing better at that point in time or for knowing better maybe, but not listening and then dealing with the riffraff of, you know, not following your better judgment. I think those situations, those consequences are harsh enough. Even if you forgive yourself, you're still going to go through the consequences for not taking accountability or, you know, <laughs> shifting blame away. I think those things are hurtful to you and to your growth as a human being. But if you're taking accountability, that's amazing. If you're absorbing sort of the effects of the consequences of your actions, that's amazing. Forgive yourself and don't allow others to hold you in content for the rest of your life. I think that forgiveness is about letting the energy go, like letting that pain go, letting that situation shift and change you for the better, but then letting it go, right? Like letting it go and giving yourself an opportunity to rise above and to do better. So that was the point of this conversation today. Hopefully it was helpful to you. It was really hard for me to put this into words because I think there are so many things that we each do that is so good for our mental wellness that we don't think to frame or to articulate because we think that it's like very commonplace. It's something that everyone does. And it's only when we realize that it's not commonplace that we recognize that there's value in sharing the wealth of how we maintain and help and support and sustain our own mental health and our own mental wellness. And I think forgiving ourselves is a huge component of that. And I think for those of you who are struggling with self-forgiveness, regardless of what it is that you did, you are deserving of forgiveness. And I believe in that fundamentally, like I do, believe that forgiveness does not exempt you from consequences. I think that consequences are things that need to be doled out in relation to the impact of the wrong that was done. Like I'm a huge proponent for consequences, but I don't think that forgiving yourself means that you're not taking accountability. I think you can take accountability, you can deal with the consequences of your actions and then forgive yourself. Don't hold yourself in contempt for the rest of your life. Like let it go and give yourself the opportunity to rise above it. In any case, that's the conversation for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, before letting you go, I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that we will be going live at least twice a month every month for the foreseeable future on our Facebook page. So definitely be sure to join in. And if you do see yourself participating in our live events on an ongoing basis, then I do suggest that you take a look at one of our package plans. Yes, yeah, so we do offer package plans that give you unlimited access to our live events as well as access to workshops and webinars over and above those live events. So definitely be sure to tune in. And these events are largely focused on self-mastery, providing you with the skills required to derive more meaning and fulfillment out of life. Now, if it is the case that you are worried about pricing, please don't be. We have just incorporated a new payment solution after pay that gives you the opportunity to make payments in four installments over a period of six weeks, rendering all of our programs and services more accessible to you. So <laughs> that's it, but definitely not all. If you're still here, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that post notification bell. Join our community, engage, comment, share with one another, talk with one another, follow us on all of our social media platforms, and we look forward to chatting with all of you very soon. We'll talk to you later.